right. I um, wanted to bring something up that is pretty awesome. So, one of my areas of interest, um, which started with the world of psychedelics, um, includes you know consciousness and altered states and um, the mysteries and unique human phenomena that otherwise cannot be explained by traditional science which is a bunch of traditional science is just like it's just the tip of the iceberg of what lies beneath the surface of the water which is a world of amazing miracles Uh, the truth is stranger than the fiction for sure Um, Anyway, if you devote yourself of six months of research on one, any given particular topic, you'll find the truth. Anyway, so um, tarot cards. So as a counselor and um, nature-based therapist, I like to be creative. And um, I like to go with my intuition, go with the flow, while also maintaining a theoretical orientation, and and, uh, that's important. Um, because there's some solid techniques, um, especially acceptance and commitment. So, um, anyway, I decided to experiment with the tarot cards as sort of an alternative uh, subjective test, like a TAT or um, or a Rorschach or something like that. So, um, so it was maybe just part personality inventory, but it was really more of a way for the client to tell their story, to create the storyline, and to demonstrate that they are at the helm, right? They're the architect of their own world. And also is a way to enrich their cognitive faculties, their creativity, their um, their sense of... Um, <clears throat> you know, just their, their investigative skills and their, their symbolic faculties. And so that's one thing that uh, the psychedelic world led me to is the study of uh, archetypes and young and symbolism and um, mythology, things like that. So the tarot cards are very rich with symbolism and archetypes, right? A rich tradition. There's a lot of um, history in there. So the cards are very meaningful. There's a lot of uh, information embedded within in those uh, pictures. So I have a, the clients create a story, like past, and then present, and then core issues, and then the future. And I had one client who repeatedly uh, drew, drew the, these fortune-related cards. Um, and he thought that was interesting. You know, not a wealthy person. Would like to be. Um, and then um, recently he showed up um, and told me that he had recently run into a um, pretty hefty fortune due to <clears throat> um, some circumstances, and I won't get into the details, but it was um, a surprise, and he was a little befuddled and bewildered and didn't really understand that what, what had taken place. There were a lot of other um, interesting um, symbols that occurred around this too, uh, which I don't want to get into, but that revealed this world of mystery and miracles. And I think what's happening here is if we look at, um, you know, the question is, well, is he actually, is, is the universe sort of guiding him to draw this card? because the universe knows what's going to happen already. I think there may, may be, that may be partially true, right? That we do have, um, we, we exist in a linear sort of uh, time wave, if you will. And um, perhaps when we dream or we're um, involved in altered states of consciousness, we go beyond the linear, uh, linearity of time into circular uh, more holographic kind of universe where we can see what has already happened, right? Because what has happened or what's going to happen in the future has already happened in a sense. So maybe um, 
what happened in that moment because consciousness is so powerful and we're surrounded by fields of information um, that energetically perhaps he was able to see that card right so through um, I'll talk more about this but remote viewing we can see things that are not visibly in front of us perhaps he was guided to those cards um, or maybe not but I think usually what happens is people uh, create their own stories they create a storyline and the because consciousness is so powerful and we're all connected it just works itself out the furniture rearranges on its own so anyway more on that later